yeah. and Phil uh, from the, uh, the the traveling community. Anne, are you there? I am. I am here. And, and hi, Anne. Thank you for being here. And, and let me just let me just introduce you first. Anne. I'm sorry that we're throwing throwing this a, a, a wee bit ahead of, ahead of schedule, but I just want to introduce you as well, Anne, because it's a, it's an impressive uh, bio as well. You are a traveller woman, a human rights activist and Primary Health Coordinator and Assistant Project Manager with Donegal Travers Project. You're, you're a local independent community development and human rights organization working for and with the Irish Traveller and Roma community in County Donegal. You've been working in the community sector for over 20 years and committed to achieving equitable health outcomes for the Traveller and Roma community and have, have advocated at local, national and international level both at policy and practice level as well. So Anne, do you want to kick off and tell us a wee bit about your work and how it applies to um, healthcare and healthcare provision with the community that you work with? Yeah, so well, firstly, I am delighted to be asked here this morning to speak as, on this, this webinar in relation to the COVID-19 and the impact on the travel community. Um, I am a community worker working within the travel community, but I'm also a member of the travel community so I see the attack on the ground with COVID-19 um, in relation to the travel community. But I think it's really important, firstly, maybe to start talking about the organisations I work in. So Donegal Travels Project, it is an independent travel organisation, and, and we work to, to make real social change and to contribute to the ending of racism and discrimination and equality experienced by the travel and Roman community in Ireland. But within the structure, we have a primary healthcare project which focuses on improving health and equality in the travel community. And we do use a social terms of health model underpinned by community development. And there is about over 40 primary healthcare projects like our own throughout Ireland. And we work, you know, uh, creatively uh, and we work to, have, to get greater solidarity, social justice and community development and human rights in the travel community throughout Ireland. But firstly, I would like to share, you know, some of the statistics around health inequalities that travellers are experiencing and have experienced, you know, before the pandemic of the world. Um, um, and we know we are aware from the Northern Travel Health Study and we are aware from the Fundamental Human Rights Research in 2019 that travellers substantially have higher um, mortality rates due to disease such as cancer, cardiovascular and chronic respiratory diseases than the general population. And as travellers, you know, we face high infant mortality rates, high rates of suicide, low rates of employment, low outcomes in education, and experience high levels of racism and discrimination, both directly and indirectly and from systematic um, structures. Because of the health inequalities highlighted in our travel health study, it was recommended by public health for people over the age of 70 should cocoon, but for members of the travel community, it has been recommended people over the age of 65, because we are aware that old age disease presents much younger um, age in the travel population. And it's also important to note that we are an ethnic minority group and we have been formally recognized by the Irish state on the 1st of March, 2017. So just, uh, and just 1% of the, tra uh, tra uh, the travel population um, in Ireland, which works out over 40,000 travelers living in the island of Ireland. But as, as travellers, um, we face an increased risk in contracting COVID-19. And we are named as a risk group due to health inequalities by method and public health um, at the beginning of this pandemic. And it's, it is important to say that, you know, the pandemic has affected the lives of everyone. And it has been a challenge and still is a challenge. But there is particular challenges to both tra traveller and Roma communities in Ireland. The, the outbreak often describes the virus as treating everyone the same, but a closer look makes it clear that the virus has further highlighted the inequalities in the travel community. And it has laid bare the inequalities the travel community, and in particular to access to services appropriate, um, and including water, sanitation, and the right to adequate culture appropriate housing and accommodation. And over the past year, I've heard agencies and individuals saying, oh, I know we're all in this together, but in actual fact, we're not. Working in the context of COVID-19 for the past year, it has highlighted the vulnerability of the travel community and, and the experiences and the challenges. The challenge of access and water and facility and self-isolation. And there is approximately over 3,000 travelers still forced to live on the side of the road and others living in poor conditions on local authority halting sites and throughout Ireland and Donegal. 
It is a basic human right to have access to water. And still in 2021, in a global pandemic, we still have Traver families across Ireland and Donegal that doesn't have the basic right to access water. Public Health and the World Health Organization has advised on how to stop the spread of the virus with hot, soapy water. But however, we still have children and young people and adults not having this basic right to access and protect themselves from the virus. Travellers have no space to isolate or cocoon to reduce the spread of the risk of COVID-19 throughout Ireland. And we are aware that the Department of Housing has envisioned in the 1st of March in 2019 a clear directive to local authorities that all travellers, no matter where they are living, will have access to basic uh, services such as water and sanitation where needed um, during this crisis. And there have been some um, services put in. But when I'm talking about services, I'm talking about sanitation, I'm talking about court to toilets, where there's no, where you have no access to water or a basin to wash your hands. Um, there have been um, many of the families living on the, the side of the road with no facilities of access and waters. And through this pandemic, the primary health care project here, are, um, if a family was asked to isolate or restrict their movement, carrying water to families. You know, we have families who is carrying water to the home, like we were in third world countries. We are seeing an organisation as a primary health care team on the ground that the crisis has an impact on the lives of travellers and in particular in the mental health and wellbeing due to some of these uh, circumstances that travellers are forced to live in and not by choice. The, low, uh, the level of racism and discrimination has increased during this pandemic and travellers continue um, different forms and experience different forms of racism and discrimination including prejudice and bias and hate speech. And this has grown massively through social media platforms. Travellers um, continue to be left behind in mainstream education structures. Digital divide has widened. We are concerned about a lot of traveller and Roma children may be lost in the education system since COVID. And we know that traveller and Roma children and young people have the lowest educational attainment in the country. Therefore, we need to be looking how we can support traveller families and Roma families. Um, as more travellers um, are uh, getting tested and become positive, these challenges will increase and the risk of Irish travellers will suffer the impact of COVID-19 and disproportionately. And as a result of many years of neglect, marginalisation and exclusion, travellers over, um, are overrepresented in COVID-19 cases over the last year compared to the majority population. And Irish travellers are more likely to contract the virus two and a half times than the general population. And we, we know from working with public health and the report figures shown for March 2021 that there's been over 4,000 travellers confirmed um, uh, uh, in, in Ireland with COVID-19. And we do believe that these figures are probably not the true reality because there is an ethnic identifier when contract tracing happens. But if travellers don't identify as being members of the travel community or a contract tracing team aren't um, comfortable asking the ethnic identifier question or if they haven't got the time to ask the question. So we do think as travel organisations, these figures are much higher. Um, Donegal Travel's Private Healthcare Project has been working to reduce the spread of COVID-19 and continue to create conditions to promote inclusion, equality and human rights in the, in the county. We have worked tirelessly with the travel community, with local authority, with public health and social inclusion, with the National Ambulance Services and with SafeNet. You know, if there was uh, clusters within the travel community, we had workers out supporting um, SafeNet to do mass screening or testing um, and the ambulance service needed support workers were out on the ground and um, supporting ambulance services. Um, our work is underpinned by human rights and community development approach to health and for us as a team the priority has become about reducing the spread of COVID-19 and the health promotion in the last year. And it was up to us as a primary health care project to balance this work in terms of crisis work and the budget work and to work and to achieve the overall health outcomes with the travel community um, from a social terms health model. Travel organisations has been essential throughout this pandemic and the reality without organisations like ourselves, we do believe that travel and Roma uh, communities would have forgot about within this pandemic. It is important for organisations and agencies to work with us together to ensure the inclusion of travellers and Roma communities. And we don't want to be seen as an afterthought. We want to be part of the implementation and plans and policies, policies from the start. And I started to see a whole of government approach and an understanding that providing decent living condition is part of the overall approach to creating better health and well-being 
within the traveller and the Roma communities. For change for real to happen and our human rights to be met, we need to have a strong approach in addressing inequalities. We need a whole government approach and necessary to address health inequalities for travellers. We must underpin by social terms of health. It needs to be a stronger partnership and a collaboration approach to travel health policy and health service provision. We need a clear accountability mechanisms to monitor and evaluate implementation of policies. We need the involvement of travel and travel organisation in decision making related to travellers' health. Nothing without us, about us, without us. As travellers, we do not want to be an afterthought or an add on, and it's important to include us in the plan and design of services. Support as a strong and uh, um, for travellers health infrastructure and tackling these challenges, we know they're not easy, but yet one thing is certain to succeed efforts, we must be led to strengthen social inclusion work and we must involve and ensure that the statutory and non statutory or joint organisation are creating the conditions for equality, inclusion and human rights and for marginalised communities in our society, both, both during COVID-19 and beyond COVID-19. Thank you. And thank you so thank you so much. Uh, thank you.